you've never seen this side of Jordan Peterson before, the faux moral sophistications of today's environmentalists, sent him into a frenzy of emotions and swearing. And maybe you'll agree when I tell you why. I think this conversation at the Hoover Institution peels away the layers to Jordan's exterior persona to reveal a vulnerable core that's hurting for the demoralized modern youth. Take a look at this next clip before we dive into it. What would you say to them as they begin university at the age of 18 or 19? What's the restorative, the redemptive sentence? What should they do? Don't be thinking your ambition is corrupt. You know, because that's part of the message now. Human beings, we're a cancer on the planet. We're headed for an environmental apocalypse. The entire historical structure is nothing but atrocity, et cetera, et cetera. Anyone with any ethical aim whatsoever is just going to pull back. You don't want to manifest any ambition, support the patriarchal structure, exploit the environment. You've got to crush yourself down. You shouldn't even have any children. It's like, no. There's no excuse for that. There's zero excuse for that. And I believe that no from Jordan Peterson is said in the backdrop of one critical fact. America's practically the only country adopting this kind of anti-humanist and anti-growth worldview. It's an idea that wants entire countries to crawl into a shell like a turtle and feel safe and virtuous in their lack of impact or action. But here's where it meets its fatal flaw. No other country's willing to go along with these ideas either on a collective or an individual level. Do you think China's willing to recede its influence while it spreads its tentacles through the world's largest network of trading routes in the form of the Belt and Road Initiative? Or do you think Russia's boxing themselves up anytime soon for the sake of the planet? Of course not, because it's only the environmentalism in the West that seems to have been co-opted by a Malthusian kind of pessimism. Just for a bit of context, let me show you the exact words of the man whose ideas are arguably still infused in modern environmentalism. Thomas Malthus wrote this in 1798 in his, quote, essay on the principle of population. And I quote, the power of population is so superior to the power in the earth to produce substance for man that premature death must in some shape or another visit the human race. The vices of mankind are active and able ministers of depopulation. They're the precursors in the great army of destruction and often finish the dreadful work themselves. But should they fail in this war of extermination, sickly seasons, epidemics, pestilence and plague, advance in terror array, and sweep off their thousands and ten thousands? Should success be still incomplete, gigantic inevitable famine stalks in the rear and with one mighty blow, levels the population with the food of the world? So do you see the outdated zero-sum game that this philosophy construes human action and consumption? And yet this idea that human activity or ambition must necessarily be curbed one way or the other to sustain the planet or its resources has been proven wrong every single time. That's exactly true on a more individual level as well, because this zero-sum thinking has enveloped most of our social and political issues as well. If one side wins, the other must lose. If men win, women must lose. If one racial group's doing well, it must be at the expense of the other. And if humanity is flourishing, that means the planet must be suffering. None of those things necessarily follow from the other, and yet it's the philosophy that seeks to tame people's ambition and fire to make them timid and ineffectual. Clearly, it's having a terrible impact on our psychological well-being because a large part of where humans derive their meaning in the first place is achievement, conquest, and ambition. I saw a professor at, at an event, something like this. He came out and trumpeted this bloody, environmentally friendly house he'd built. And, you know, fair enough, man. It was a, it was a pretty interesting house, but not everybody had the $4 million that, that it took him to build it. And I'm not criticizing his money, even. It's like... He's had some money, good for him, he built a house, okay. But then to trumpet that as a moral virtue, well, you're pushing it there. And then he came out to all the kids and he said, you know, my wife and I decided that we were only gonna have one child. And I think that's one of the most ethical things we could have possibly done. And I would strongly encourage you to do the same. I thought, you son of a You get up in front of these young people. A lot of these kids were uh, children of first generation immigrants from China. And, and he showed all these images, you know, of these terrible factories in China, these endless rows of sterile mechanism that were subordinating all the Chinese people to this terrible, you know, capitalist uh, machine. And I thought, you don't understand. Half the audience is looking at those factories and thinking, that's a hell of a lot better than struggling through the mud under Mao, buddy. And so 
he, he, I don't know where he thought he was, but to come out in front of all those kids and basically tell them that the whole human enterprise is so goddamn corrupt that the best thing they could possibly do is limit their multiplication. And to think of himself as a scholar and an educator, it was just, I did say something, by the way. It was rather uncomfortable, and he stomped off the stage. But that's no message for young people. That's no, there's no excuse for that. And you think, well, I, you know, we're going to destroy the planet. We have to do this. We have to demoralize the youth to be ethical. It's like, yeah, really, that's your theory you're going to demoralize young people to be ethical that's your theory it's like you should go home and think about that for like a year and i'm passionate about this you know because you have no idea how many people that's killing you have no idea i see people everywhere all over the world they're so demoralized especially young people especially Young people with a conscience, because they've been told since they were little that there's nothing to them but corruption and power. It's like, how the hell do you expect them to react? You know, they, well, I shouldn't do anything, man, you know? Those were strong words there from Jordan, but perhaps that's the only thing that does justice to what he feels seeing a swath of the population so hollowed out of meaning and ambition, and it's a problem that arguably hits men even harder because nature doesn't give them something to live for in the way it gives to women in the form of children. Jordan Peterson once made this clear in one simple sentence, quote, Women already know what to do, men have to figure out what to do. What do you think is the impact of a culture that's stripping their strength, drive for conquest or achievement, and the desire to leave a legacy in the form of children? We even saw this when a far-left strand of the feminist movement called on men to stop working out or going to the gym because it supposedly perpetuates toxic masculinity. That's a glimpse of the world we find ourselves in, and it leaves no question why depression and loneliness are on the rise, another source of meaning for a lot of people in the lineage they leave behind in the form of children. But on a grander scale, it's not just meaning but the most necessary mechanism for the survival of the species. Sure, people in this modern advanced civilization may be able to get away with having fewer children, but humans throughout tens of thousands of years have struggled to keep their population stable or growing. Famine, disease, war, and death meant that the average life expectancy was merely 30 to 40 years, and the infant mortality rate was too high for replacement. In other words, having a lot of children was always the only way to make sure enough of them survived for the population of the tribe or family to grow, and yet that deeply ingrained instinct is being seen as detrimental to the planet, to the point that human civilization itself is seen as a net negative. If you know what the antinatalist movement is, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Antinatalists can almost be regarded as a fringe extreme of the environmentalist movement that seeks for humans to voluntarily bring themselves to extinction, since there's something intrinsically destructive about life itself. In all of its forms, that is the most pessimistic and hopeless message that can be given to any child in the world. It rips the foundation from underneath everything a person may want to become or achieve because it devalues everything that makes them human in the first place. I think Jordan Peterson, being a psychologist himself, understands just how destructive that message is to a young human mind, and perhaps that's why you see his outburst of emotion against it. When you think about that idea in totality, it at least makes you see where he's coming from.